Hello there, and welcome to a Helldivers 2 First Impressions video. Uh, please note that I am recording my commentary over my own pre-recorded footage, as opposed to commentating live, as I usually would. Uh, this is because I had a glitch at the beginning of the game that basically crashed the game and ruined all of my recording, which was a shame. Um, but it does need to be said, it is the only glitch that I have had so far in the game, and I've been playing for about four hours-ish now. So, um, yeah, nothing too serious to worry about, but that's why I'm doing a pre-recorded thing. Yeah, whilst we're looking at the uh, start-out character customization, uh, this is basically everything you start the game with, with nothing else added onto it. Uh, but whilst we're looking at me doing that, I'll just tell you about what the game actually is. Helldivers 2 is a follow-up to Helldivers 1, obviously, which was a top-down shooter where you fight for Super Earth. Super Earth is like futuristic Earth, I guess, and you're trying to defend it from alien invaders. These alien invaders come in various shapes and sizes. In this game specifically, you're fighting against a faction of bugs, which are kind of like the bugs from Starship Troopers. And a faction of, I'm gonna go with, robots. I've not really come across them yet, but I've seen gameplay from them and they look gnarly AF. Now, the key difference between this game and the first Helldivers is a perspective change. Um, we're not top-down anymore, we're a third-person shooter down on the ground with our soldiers, which for me at least has come as a positive change. I feel a lot more immersed in the action, I feel like everything is a lot scarier and a lot more scaled and in my face just yeah um it was a good change a very good change other than that players will quickly notice if they've played helldivers 1 that helldivers 2 follows a very familiar format you will drop onto a planet controlled by one maybe more i'm not actually sure if they do multi-faction planets but you will drop onto a semi-randomized planet with semi-randomized enemy formations, uh, with specific objectives that you have to complete, and a bunch of side objectives you can choose to complete for extra credits and other such nonsense. And whilst rewarding, choosing to do extra side objectives can be risky. Risky because the enemies in this game are brutal. They will cut you down time and time again. It's kind of up to you to decide whether you think the risk is worth the reward, so you can sort of judge how long you're going to spend in a mission based on that. Do you want to just complete the main objectives and get out, or do you want to try and search around for more loot and go to all of the different waypoints on the map to try and get extra stuff? FYI, you can literally get premium currency from exploring these maps so in my personal opinion it's usually worth going to all the little gold markers that appear uh, they will contain like a drop pod and you can like loot either extra battle pass xp or um yeah premium currency which is kind of mad it's only a little bit but it it's something You'll see from the map screen here that, just like in Helldivers 1, you are working with the entire Helldivers community to try and clear these planets of their various infestations. This creates sort of like an overarching goal, and you will get rewarded for completing that goal with the credits that you see up in the top right. Um, you also have smaller objectives, which are the bottom right ones, which will get you battle pass uh, medals is what they're called. They're like the Battle Pass currency, I guess. Um, so it's always worth trying to complete these various objectives. It seems to usually just be like clear this mission and, you know, help to take back the various planets. There are a variety of objectives on offer when you actually get to the planet's surface. It, these range from eliminating enemies to eliminating enemy nests to finding minerals, launching missiles, so on and so forth. So there is a reasonable amount of variety here. It seems to be pretty comparable to the first game, so I would wager it's probably not going to get old for a fair old while. Things obviously get spiced up at regular intervals when you get new weapons, new cosmetics, and new deployables as well, which you can activate out in the field, like um, heavy weapons, artillery strikes, so on and so forth. We'll get more into those in a little bit.
The mission you're about to see is my first time ever out in the field, so you can expect to see some mistakes and I'm sort of learning as I go along, which kind of makes this perfect for first impressions anyways, so that's all good. Uh, you'll see here I'm deciding where on the map to drop, and depending on where I hover the cursor, it will tell me whether there are enemies nearby and things like that. So you can sort of strategically try and drop either really close to your objective, but with a higher risk of enemies, or you could drop really far away from your objective, away from enemies, but you'd have to make a long trek across the planet's surface, which in and of itself could pose a danger to yourself. So again, even at the early stages, like, there's a little bit of planning involved, and you've got to try and, like, yeah, just decide your approach. Now that we've landed on the planet's surface, you'll see me quickly open the stratagem menu. These are deployables that we have chosen before the mission started, accessed by holding down L1 and tapping a combination of buttons on the D-pad to call in these, like, yeah, airdrops. They have heavy weapons, they can have ammo resupplies, uh, healing items, auto turrets, and airstrikes, all of which are very useful and all very, very capable of friendly fire, so do be careful when deploying those out in the field. Uh, they can kill both you and your teammates, so eesh. This also extends to the supply drop itself, so you can very literally get crushed by a supply pod and die instantaneously. Um, you can also use this to your advantage, though, and use a supply pod to crush an enemy that happens to be chasing you. So, that's kind of cool. A quick note for those of you playing in multiplayer, friendly fire is permanently on, there's not really any way to turn this off, I don't think. So, um, you need to be very very careful where you shoot, and where you deploy your pods, and where you set up defences and stuff, because they can and will mow down your friends, uh, as can your own bullets. So, yeah, be a team player. You'll see me just getting absolutely destroyed by the planet almost instantaneously though. Um, if those things explode on you whilst there's an enemy like rushing you, uh, your movement speed gets slowed and you can't really do anything, which is like crazy. Ah yes, the sweet, sweet release of death. <laughs> um, yeah, that's one of many deaths I've had on this game so far. You'll see that um, even though I completed the objective very quickly, things can turn south also very quickly. Um, at this point, I have a choice to make, really. I can either stay and fight and try and, like, get more objectives done. I think at this point, I don't really know what I'm doing, so I'm kind of trying to eliminate all of the bugs, um, thinking that there will be a definitive end to them. That's not really how it works. They can kind of just keep spawning, depending on where you are on the map. Um, so I may be making a bad decision here, but... Um, yeah, you can kind of see where the sort of the risk comes, because any enemy can kill you, even the small fry. And you see my ammo down there? That's all the ammo I have until I call in a supply pod. It's also worth mentioning that if my clip isn't empty when I reload, I dump whatever ammo is left in that clip on the floor, never to be used again. So, the longer I stay, the harsher things are going to get for me. As I work on resupplying, you'll notice I spot some loot on the ground. There's a ton of various things scattered around the planet from other hell divers that have been on the planet and died. They can give you various buffs, you can find heavy weapons and other such nonsense. Um, but now that the supply package has arrived, I can restock off of it. It's worth mentioning, your allies can also use this in multiplayer, so it's worth coordinating with your friends to try and figure out when is a good time. You also notice I can re-loot my dead body, so if I die with a heavy machine gun, I can walk up to that heavy machine gun, pick it back up, and then I have all of my stuff. Um, 
most of the resources you're carrying also get lost when you die, so you should go to your body to try and recover those resources if you want them. It's worth me taking the time to comment on just how visually improved this Helldivers is over the first game. Makes a lot of sense because obviously it's come out a lot later, but the general atmosphere of wandering around on these planets is awesome. It genuinely feels like you're in a hostile world. Um, and yeah, like just the ambiance of the whole thing is just astoundingly good. Whilst not the most graphically amazing game in the world, I genuinely think they've done something here to make this game still just look amazing. It just, it, yeah, it really pops. I like it a lot. As you see me slowly make my way towards the blue light that signifies extraction, it's worth mentioning that every single gun in this game feels amazing to fire and every single explosive feels impactful when it goes off. Uh, blasting the little bits off of all the different bugs is super satisfying and I think it's going to take quite a while to get old. Something to note with the aiming, and you'll see it here, is um, my bullets actually fire where the white circle is, as opposed to where my crosshair is. And the speed at which that circle moves changes depending on the, how heavy the gun is that you're using. So, like, guns that are heavier and have more sway are less um, responsive. So swinging around a heavy machine gun is a lot more difficult than swinging around a pistol. Making your choice of weapon in each combat encounter all the more important. how intense these final stands are, hearing the countdown in the background as the dropship is coming to pick you up. It really is epic to finally see it, like, swoop down from the sky and save you from whatever disaster you happen to have gotten yourself into. At the end here we get a little breakdown of all of the stuff that we've accomplished, some of it gives us XP, some of it gets us requisition credits I think they're called. Um, XP will unlock you new stratagems that you can deploy in battle, i.e. the airdrops, um, and you need to pay credits to get them the first time. 
Uh, you'll see we've got medals as well. Medals are the battle pass currency, which we'll get into in a second. And we also have samples, which we've collected from the planet's surface. Uh, you lose those when you die, but you can pick them back up off your body. They get you additional XP and other such stuff. But the basic gist is, the better you do in the field, the better rewards you get at the end. It's fairly straightforward and very much like every other video game, I guess. You can customize the emote you do at the end, and I believe also customize the banner that appears in the background of your character and stuff on this screen. Uh, those are acquired through progressing through the game, completing challenges, battle pass stuff, so on and so forth. Uh, speaking of which, these are this game's version of the battle pass. They're called War Bonds. Uh, there are two at launch. There's the standard one, which you get for free, which is this big one here, and it's got tons of rewards on it. Um, on this reward track, there are also premium currency as well, which you can spend in the premium currency store, obviously. Um, so that's the one that's like in the middle, that's one medal to purchase. Um, basically, that will allow you to buy anything from the premium store. Um, and the game seems to give you a reasonable amount of them early on. Like, I could buy all of this stuff if I wanted to for free. And there's plenty more for me to earn in-game as well. So it's not like it front-loads all of the free currency. It seems as though you can kind of earn it at a fairly steady rate as you play through the game. Which is really nice. Um, this is the paid uh, war bond. Uh, this will get you other skins and also weapons as well. Uh, I don't know how I feel about there being weapons in these paid ones, but I guess that's kind of how DLC used to work anyways. It was like you would pay to get new characters and weapons. So, sure, why not? It's a PvE game, so it doesn't matter too much. Just to clarify, as I said before, you unlock stuff in the various battle passes using medals. These medals are acquired uh, by completing missions or finding them in the field by exploring. You can get anywhere between two, or, well, one and about six, as far as I can tell at the moment, for each mission you complete. And you can get more by finding them, as I say. So you acquire them at a fairly steady rate. Uh, the further you get in each war bond, the more expensive stuff gets, so it could probably get quite grindy towards the end. Um, about the halfway point, you're looking at about 30 to 50 to purchase a single costume. So that is like a reasonable amount of uh, grinding, but it's it's not too bad, and it is designed to last a while anyways, so it's it's understandable. As I apply new customization to my character, I think you pretty much get a general idea of the gameplay loop here. Um, suffice to say, there isn't too much of a story, it's just sort of like you are in a war against all of the other races that are trying to take over the various planets. That's about all you get, with just a little bit of filler dialogue here and there to sort of flesh out the world a teensy bit. Um, you can find... Uh, data pads and things on the various planets to expand the story a teensy bit more, but these are quite vague and a lot of them boil down to sort of jokes, I would say, more than they boil down to serious lore. Um, and that is kind of the tone this game goes for, for the most part. It's quite tongue-in-cheek, it's very silly. Um, the idea that you are expendable cannon fodder is quite often sort of looked at as a, as a laughy joke kind of thing. It's a very light-hearted tone, despite how gruesome the combat actually is. Uh, the whole thing, very much reminiscent of Starship Troopers. Again, that seems to be the vibe they're going for. Um, we're now going to look at the last system in the game, which is the um, Stratagem system, which I've opened the wrong menu here because I'm a complete um, noob. Um, <laughs> I'm now looking for the console, even though I was right in front of it. And there we go. Um, so this is where you upgrade all of your stratagems. Um, this is what you spend your credits on, and you unlock new things to spend credits on as you level up as well. So this is why you're earning XP and things like that. Um, so yeah, we can buy all of our new stuff basically from here. Like we can get heavy machine guns, which is what we start with. Um, but I ended up buying later on an anti-material rifle, which is a, basically a a high armor piercing long range rifle um, 
super fun to fire at the big bads. Like if you've got a boss that you need to take down, like an armored boss, um, the anti-material rifle is um, a marksman's best friend. It's super fun. But uh, yeah, you can see me sort of going down the list here. There's all sorts of cool stuff here. Um, and a lot of cool multiplayer interactions as well, actually. So some of the heavier guns, if you have an ally supporting you, they can be fired a lot faster or they can be fired with a lot less recoil. And that is awesome. Um, there's also jetpacks. You can get jetpacks. So that's something that I'm very much looking forward to. Uh, different types of airstrikes, so on and so forth. Um, it looks as though there's going to just basically be a steady stream of progression as you go through the game, which is really nice. And if I, if this game is anything like the first Helldivers, they will keep expanding this with new stuff over time. There'll be new armor sets to grind for, new weapons to unlock, new stratagems to unlock. I assume. I, I can't say for certain, but I would guess they're going to be adding more to this. Which brings me to my overall first impressions, and that is that this is tons of fun. Like, genuinely, this has been one of the most positive first impressions I've had of a game in a very, very long time. And assuming they are going to be adding more stuff over time, it's only going to get better. Um, the game is definitely going to be more fun played with friends. I have noticed immediately playing solo that I was running into some really annoying difficulty spikes. It wasn't annoying to the extent that I was like saying, God, this game is stupid or anything like that. It was more just like, damn, this is hard to do solo. Like, if you have a squad, this is going to be way better. You can summon in randoms if you want, but obviously friendly fire still applies. So if you get into a lobby with people that are not wanting to be very helpful, they could present some frustrating situations, which is a bit of a shame, but it's kind of just the nature of the game, unfortunately. Um, it is completable solo, so like you don't need to have a squad, but I would say it comes highly recommended. Um, yeah, provided they keep adding more stuff to this, I can see me playing this for a very long time. Um, I love the tone, I love the way the game looks, I like the customization on the characters, I like the way the guns feel, they feel great to fire. Um, I like the fact that you don't need a bloated story to have a good time, basically. And that's what this game is. It's a good time. So I would recommend it to anyone and everyone, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, that's my first impressions. So thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Farewell.